But obviously, forget my opinion on this whole matter. The most important and the most interesting and opening opinion of all this thing was definitely models coming out and essentially denouncing everything that Lily Rose Depp had to say about being a Nepo baby and the advantages that that's come to from it when she wants to be a model. And they completely, completely ripped her to shreds. And it was pretty interesting to see because it was models that covered every kind of remit. It wasn't just done in terms of, I feel like... Um, you know, out of any type of jealousy or anything, because some of these models are super successful, some of them are on the come up, some of them just have a good and comfortable career, and they all categorically came out and essentially, you know, denounced and, you know, basically called into question everything Lily Rose Depp said, and I thought it was really, really illuminating. One model here called Vittoria Seretti said as follows. This is her, obviously, as you can see there, looking very, very good in the headshot there, nice colours in the black and white, and then her actual comment here is quite eye-opening it says as follows i just want to share a thought here because i can i bumped into an interview of a so-called nepo baby or whatever y'all call it because privileged daughter slash son cousin niece nephew whatever of some kind of celebrity let me tell you something yes i get the whole i'm here and i work hard for it but i would really love to see if you would have lasted through the first five years of my career not only being rejected because I know you have an experience with it and you can tell me your sad little story about it in quotation or in brackets, even if at the end of the day, you still have, you still always go to cry on your dad's couch in your villa in Malibu. But how about not being able to pay for your flight back home to your family, waiting for hours to do a fitting and casting just to see a nipper baby walk past you from the warm seat of his or her's Mercedes with his or her driver, her or his friend, assistant agent taking care of her her or her her his mental health you have no fucking idea how much you have to fight to make people respect you it takes years you get it by free from day one i have many nippo baby friends whom i respect but i can't stand listening to you compare yourself to me i was not born on a comfy sexy pillow with a view i know it's not your fault but please appreciate and know the place that you come from love xv and it's interesting because i feel like there's a bunch of Nepo babies or people who come from privilege in the DJ world, for instance. One that I can immediately think of is Peggy Goo. But she goes out of her way not to speak about her background and her family and how she got brought up because it just invites unnecessary criticism. Why open yourself up to it? But in some areas, Nepo babies want to kind of stand up for themselves and say, no, I'm here for my, I'm here because of the, you know, my hard work only. And essentially, they make themselves a target because people start looking, you know, and analysing further, pinching and zooming. And they clearly see that, mm, by all accounts, if you were just a regular model, you would find it 10 times harder to make it based on just how tall you are. Because the girl's 5'2". So you should immediately find it difficult. Regardless of what her face card says, it'll be immediately hard to make it as a model, especially a runway model, especially a model with editorials and all that stuff. Because they love models with long arms, long legs and whatnot. And proportions have to be a certain way. And if you weigh over a certain amount, you're suddenly plus size. It's awful. It's really shallow and whatnot, but it's clearly hard to get in just based on stuff that you can't even control. So the fact that you get a foot in, in despite all your quote unquote modeling flaws or acting shortcomings says everything you need to say about being a Nepo baby. That's the whole point. You get given advantages or introductions that most people wouldn't get and some things get overlooked that other people wouldn't overlook. And also, as she mentioned here about the struggles, if you do get rejected, it pretty, it, pr it must be nice to get rejected on some comfy pillows. It must be nice to have people, you know, um, taking you to and from your airport and not having to jump on the public transport or, you know, fight for a space on a flipping bus or not have money to come back home from a flight, from a casting. All those things definitely help your ability to land a job because if you have somehow a clear, calm state of mind, that will allow you to present your best self. But when you're worried about you know looking after your brother whether or not you had enough of my money to send your mom whether or not this person has this has this is that that's going to affect your ability to kind of do a good job i would assume so that's just my assumption and then look at the list of other models that came out and said something this is courtesy of model facts on twitter who put together all these screenshots and endorsements from other models who absolutely tore this lady a new one another one i have to point out here that someone said 
let's put let's talk about Anouk. It's Anouk Yai opens up about her struggles as a newcomer in the conversation regarding Nepo babies. And again, let's get everyone's face card up because I feel like that's important to set the tone so you know that they're legit and it's not just some random person talking. These are actual legit models speaking about this stuff. And this is Anouk Yai. She says as following: How do you pronounce her name? Anouk Yai or Anouk Yai? Anouk Yai. I'm gonna say. I remember at the very beginning of my career, with all this hype around my name, there was this perceived notion that I had an upper hand. I can tell you it was quite the opposite. Words can't begin to explain the feeling of being a young new face having to navigate this industry full of powerful influential people and feeling like you are nothing. I moved to New York with nothing but my college debt and $30 to my, my older sister gave me. With the viral photo, many people, even ones in the industry, beloved. What's the viral photo? Is that the one? Of, is that is, is a nuke the one from um, ah oh, from a festival? Is that is that a nuke? I'm not too sure because I'm not again. When it comes to models, that's my blind spot. I love fashion, but models, I have no idea what their names are. But is she the one from the festival where she's wearing like some denim shorts and a black top? Look, her skin looks amazing in the sun. Is that her? I'm not too sure. But anyway, let's continue. Um, with the viral photo, many people, even ones in the industry, believe that my notoriety provided me some type of privilege or power. But I quickly learned that what it means to truly have power and privilege. Because at the end of the day, I had none. I was just a new face. I remember just weeks into my career, my agent sat me down and told me, everyone thinks you're rich now, so you have to play the part. <laughs> oh my God amazing isn't it you gotta love fashion and modeling in general or the fashion industry overall just your image alone the fact that you are certain places people think you got money which might explain why people yeah i heard people say it's a lot like with influencers you might see them in certain places wearing certain things but some some of them don't have 50 dollars in their bank account which is absolutely crazy to think of right um but it continues here and i did play my part i knew that I knew that that was my way in. I remember barely being able to afford living in New York, but having to budget out flights, hotels, cars for work, taking out loans so I could buy food, drowning in debt, seeing myself on billboards, but having a few dollars to my name. Imagine how that must feel. Seeing yourself on a billboard for this amazing campaign, looking amazing, looking cool and clothes, going to all these shows, having all these people on your phone, but then you don't have any money in your bank account. God almighty. I had flights for, I had to fight for every single thing, but I don't mind. I wanted to earn my stripes. Every day I went to casting after casting, go see after go see. I knew that if I walked into a room, the only way I would be remembered was by being one of, if not the most talented or interesting people. That's the kind of, you know, that's the unfortunate part of being black in the industry. You can't be good enough. You can't be average. You always have to overperform. Overperform and sometimes it's not enough. You overperform, you do the best job, and it still isn't enough. But then you have to kind of dust yourself over again and go again because no one's going to give you any sympathy. No one's going to give you a tissue if you're crying. You just have to kind of wipe yourself down and go again. It's brutal. It really is. Every day I went to casting after casting, go see after go see. I knew that if I walked into a room, the only way I could be remembered was by being one of, if not the most talented or extraordinary people. I taught myself everything I could about the industry, studied every model, watched every film, learned how to walk, how to talk, how to pose, everything. Even though I had taught myself all these things, I still walked into rooms terrified because I knew that if I didn't perform my best, I would have nothing to fall back on. I'm young, I'm broke, I'm alone, my parents can't help me. You know how true and how touching that is? That speaks directly to my experience, bruv. There is no... There is no comfort blanket. It doesn't exist. It just, you just have to legitimately dust yourself up and keep it going. Anyway, there's more to her. I can confidently say, after relentless and consistent work, I've been able to command my place in industry. But the hurdles I've had to go through were at never ending teaching myself how to run a business at 19 years old, the imposter syndrome of being a kid from the hood trying to make it out, the survivor's guilt, being ignored at work when someone more important walked in, constantly passing out from exhaustion, being told to think about the money, think about your family, not being able to get support from the parents or because you're the one supporting them. I even, be, I even got called a cockroach by photographers. The list goes on. Anouk is one of the most famous, well-known models out there. And she's got photographers in this era, knowing everything that happened with Terry Richardson and other famous photographers and people in the industry who got cancelled and taken down for their horrible, bully, abusive behaviour. There are still people behind the scenes till this day calling models cockroaches and shit. Are you dumb? And this obviously comes because you're not, you know, you don't have the Nepo Baby tag. 
You're not the daughter of Barack Obama. You're not the daughter of, you know, Samuel Jackson or something like that. You don't have that advantage of coming in a room and having people immediately respect you based on your name. You have to fight for everything yourself. That's why it makes it harder. And again, if you're a Nepo baby, you have your own struggles, cool. But trying to make your struggle the same as everybody else's is absolutely, incredibly insulting. That's what it is. It's insulting. It continues. I will see some of you privileged kids stress about not booking a job because of the impact of your career. While there are those of us who stress about not booking a job because we don't know if we'll be able to take care of our parents this month or put our siblings through school. Crazy, isn't it, to think. I'm proud to say that I've fought for every ounce of respect or acknowledgement that I have. Seeing people benefit from nepotism doesn't bother me at all. I know my talent. Cool. I am work ethic will get me into any room I want. Boss. I, what does bother me is when power players in the industry, brands, directors and editors pretend to act ignorant to the fact. Exactly. That's, that's always been the annoying part for me also. It's not the fact that nepotism exists because, you know, whatever. Hot people, influential people are going to have babies and those babies are going to end up ruling the world. It is what it is. It's a, it's a, it's a story as old as time. We know it. But it's just a, it's the willful ignorance or blind um, refusal to acknowledge the privilege that those people have from regular people like you and I. It just is what it is. It's unfair, we know. We have to operate in the world that it is, is as not as we want it to be in our head. There is no such thing as a utopia, we understand. But don't insult my intelligence by suggesting that this person's struggle is the same as mine. It's not struggle Olympics, I understand, but it is insulting to suggest me worrying already about a shoot that's four months ahead of time because I don't have any money now is similar to this person who's going to jump on a jet whenever they feel like it and go to this casting if they're in the mood. It's not the same thing. Please, it's not the same thing. And to the privilege, I'm not saying that having privilege is a bad thing. It's a blessing. More power to you. And I know you work hard and have your struggles just like the rest of us. But God damn, if you only knew the hell we go through just to be able to stand in the same room that you were born in. Oh, ho, 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 ho. what a killer line at the end. If you only knew the hell we had to go through just to be able to stand in the same room that you were born in. That's it. That's a mic drop. You don't have anything more to say that. Mic drop, mic drop, mic drop, mic drop. Nothing else needs to be said there. And Nuke absolutely smashed.